How many of you have had the opportunity to win five million dollars playing poker? Probably not a lot. I mean, like. I mean, anyone okay. who's played in like any right, big fine, fine, World fine. Series event. How many of you have actually been close to it? Maybe a few of you. Maybe no, I'm not I sure. I wouldn't say I was. Close. But I have not. No. Jonathan has not. No. But the guys we're going to talk about today have been because they are six-handed for the 25k poker players championship a 25k that drew over a thousand players jonathan making first place five million dollars these guys have locked up one million dollars that must be a pretty damn good feeling oh man but there's so much more to play for as you're saying there's still four million dollars to be won one million dollars is chump change compared to that chump Grants. change and chump changes everybody's stack compared to julian martini who is more than twice the second place stack right now he's going to be the aggressive guy in the hand i'm going to let you know that he's going to be against mark rivera this is a great six-handed hand. It was suggested by Let Me Win Win on Twitter. If you have a suggestion for the breakdown, tweet at us and include a YouTube link. The other things you need to know about this hand are Rivera sitting there with about 30 blinds, and there's a one stack that is super short. It's only got three blinds, yep. so there's massive ICM pressure that Martini may decide to apply. It's possible. It's not impossible. It's, I mean, it's Who a breakdown hand, so maybe some cool stuff is going to happen. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Another place cool stuff happens is Nitrogen Sports Poker Room. And you guys got to get on there. Yes, you do. At the end of every single month, we have our very special Poker Guys tournament where, for some reason, Nitrogen yep. guarantees 1,000 buy-ins, and we never get more than, you know, like 85, 90 buy-ins. It's an unbelievable spot. They just giving away money. It's a tenth of a mill millibit to play, which is like a dollar, give or take, depending on the price of Bitcoin at any one moment. You have to get in there and do it. It's free money. They're giving it away. You could play blind. You could just go all in every hand. It would still You're be making plus money. It would be plus EV, and you have to use the link that we tweet out about nitrogen every once in a while. Also, it's in all of our podcasts. Use that link, or else you don't even get access to that tournament, so make sure you use the link. When you sign up. Get some nitrogen. Get you some poker. Do some sports betting, too. Whatever. Have some fun. Let's get to the hand. Fantastic. So Martini opened under the gun with Queen-5. Mark Rivera has called in the small blind. We know he has a queen. <laughs> he always shows the one card, and it's always the exact same high card as the other person. That's <laughs> true. It's just a weird trick. <laughs> Let me see now. Those are two very different hands that these players have free flop. <laughs> I guess they both contain a queen, so. I mean, that's actually pretty similar, It actually really. adds a lot of similarity. Okay, I'm talking about as far as like how high up in the distribution they are. Now, a lot of you might be saying, okay, this Martini guy is under the gun. I know we're six-handed. He's opening queen five off. This guy is a spew master. What's he doing? Actually, this is one of the scenarios where it kind of makes sense. This is the 25K Poker Players Championship. A lot of these players, if not all of them, have never been in a spot where the money is this big. If you are the overwhelming chip leader, like Martini is, it's a great time to literally open everything. By the way, there's a three blind stack, so everybody's terrified. Yeah, I don't know if everyone has 30 blinds that it's necessarily a good time to sure. open everything, but when there's a three blind stack, as there is, holy moly, you can just push the whole world around. If the three blind stack picks up aces, it doesn't really cost you much anyway when you've got all the blinds. You know, it's not a big deal. It might actually be there. good if that guy doubles up. I mean, you keep him around longer, you keep everybody scared, you get to keep opening. It's yeah. kind of amazing. Yeah, two opens, you get the money back right, right. away, right? Actually, more. One open, you basically get the money back. It's a, it's a great deal. So, um, so we get that one. Yeah, right? yeah. So yeah, with the three blind stack and all the chips, you should definitely be opening here for sure when the money jumps are significant like they are. Right. It's just a, a auto open with everything. It seems seems pretty correct. Much. Now, pretty much everything. Is it correct to just call with the queens here for Rivera though? He's got about 29 blinds. There's two 50-ish blind stacks. Of course, there's a three blind stack. What should he be doing here? I mean, I really don't like the call. I think it is a mistake. I think I understand why he calls. I think he's afraid of busting. Yep. And he doesn't want to run into aces or kings or a snap call that ends up beating him by the river, ace king, or just a, an under pair, whatever. Anything that doesn't fold and he loses to is all the same to him, right? But to me, this is a very clear raise. I understand that you don't want to go bust here. I understand there's a $300,000 money jump that if you just close your eyes and fold, you're probably going to get. But guess what? If, you're the, if that's that important to you, don't look at your hand and frickin' fold. Uh, yeah, Otherwise. I mean Otherwise, let's raise right now. And I think there's two clear options, yep. right? One of them is a normal raise, which is really optimal here. Yeah, that's the best play if you're not really playing money scared, is making right. something like eight blinds, right. right? You're out of position. It's fine to play money scared, though. I mean, it's very I mean, reasonable. I, would, I mean, wouldn't recommend, wouldn't recommend playing money of scared. Of course not. Of course not. But I'm saying, like, it's way better to just go all in here than to flat, I think. Like, pick up the chips that are in the middle. Don't put yourself in a situation where you're going to make a bad fold later. Because even with queens, which is so powerful, 
what are we going to do when an ace or a king is on the board and right. this guy bets? Because I got to tell you, the dude who's opening queen five is going to bet a fair amount and I probably not just one barrel. I think all of the flops, Jonathan. Not I just, no, not just, not just a flop, them. but I'm saying yeah. he's going to barrel probably turns as yeah. well. And if it's an ace high board or a king high board, we're just going to fold a lot, right? I mean, okay, there's one scenario where this is good, where you've seen Martini open constantly and you're like, okay, I want the best chance to double up here. I actually care about winning this yes. thing. Yes. I'm closing my eyes and calling down on all but the very worst flops. All but the very worst flops. Okay. I'm, I'm going to close my eyes and call down. And, and I'm willing to play that high variance because I know this guy is just trying to give it away in this spot because of the ICM situation. I, that is not awful for sure, but even that is questionable when you're doing it from the small blind. Because now we're letting the big blind in also. Now we have to win a three-way pot so much more of the time. It turned out here the big blind folded, but that was just plain luck, yep. right? I mean, the big blind's getting an outrageous price and is calling most of the time. Queens loses equity by doing that. A small three bet is so much better, I think. But I think once we're in the situation we've decided to flat, we have to be playing it not for fear-based reasons, but to induce. Yes, absolutely. This is a... Uh... Interesting call preflop. You're expecting oh, a Oh, wait a minute. Actually, it, it is a call preflop, I think, because of ICM. Pardon me. Because of those two big blinds. Yep. So Rivera, way ahead. 95% favorite against Martini. Also, you just you just, uh, you just just make so much money from bluff catching with this hand in this spot because Martini is just always folding when you 3-bet or you just get it in against... A better hand. Right, but you can get you know. him to be aggressive towards you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying he's going to make some. He's, you know, he's going to make 600k here. If Martini gets a barrel card like a, a king or you know something like that, he might fire again. 600,000 apiece. Turn card is a three, which means Martini Ooh. has picked up a gut <laughs> shot. Oh man. <laughs> I think there are some times when a Martini decides to. To, to barrel here, um, you know, Rivera has a lot of ace-jack, ace-queen type hands that, that might fold, fold to two barrels. Um, you know, sometimes he floats with, floats with king-queen suited sometimes if he has a backdoor flush draw. So now that Martini's actually acquired some equity, um, you know, he might want to just start blasting big on the turn, shove, for, shove River, and Rivera is going to be in a prison. Well, three million in the pot. Good. And he has bet big, 2.3 million. Because the other thing, too, is, you know, the, the actual value hands that decide, might, might call the turn, like pocket eights, nines, tens, jacks, queens, have a tough decision on the river. So, um, you know, less tough, I guess, as higher as they go, even though they're all just the same kind of bluff catcher. But, um, you know, he ha happens to have the, the top of his range here. So I, I, it's going to be hard for him to let it go, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if he folds River here if Martini decides to go for it, but we'll see. Vera has played a time bank card, extends his clock. He calls the bet. And we have a 7.65 million pot going to the river. Rivera with 5.3 million behind. Well, no four on the river, but it's a double paired board. It's straighty. It's flushy. Mm -hmm. This, this is, is a, a delicious. Pit. This is a delicious spot to, to bluff here for for Martini. Um, you know, he has a five of clubs in his hand, which is kind of nice. Rivera so often is this cat. He never really has a seven. Doesn't really ever have a six, so you know he's he's pretty capped at you know eights through queens. Oh That's, my word! He oh shoved man. on him. Yeah, he's putting him to the test. It's all into call. Rivera with queens. He's got the best hand, but he's staring at a board that he absolutely hates. I think he can do it. But then the two big blinds of Mark Perot. I think he finds a fold here. You have to remember too. Martini has all the sevens and sixes <laughs> you know he, he he does have flushes here um it's it's you know you got to be brave <laughs> he's counting how many time bank cards he's got it's all in to call there are big money jumps there's a guy at the table with two big blinds i think i'm dumb enough to call here i think rivera may be smart enough to call He's 
running out of time. He hasn't got that many time bank cards left to play. Needs to make a decision. And the decision he makes is to fold. He lets the Queens go. <sighs> Martini now up over 30 million. He's a 100 big blind stack. Nice lift. All of Jonathan's fears just came true. Jonathan was really hoping that Rivera was playing this because it's a deceptive way to play it and he could make a lot of money this way. No, Rivera was playing scared. And as Jonathan said I mean. pre-flop, he could just shove if he wants to be scared. 29 blinds, we think, is too much to shove pre-flop. But, but if you're just going to play scared post-flop, it's better than giving away a bunch of the stack and not even giving yourself a chance to win the hand. And honestly, all the kids are shoving 29 blinds these days anyway. Yeah, so it's, it's probably fine, whatever. It's probably fine. The solvers probably love it. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, okay. But let's, let's get more into this. So he calls the turn. Good. That's fine. If we yeah. decide to call the flop, which he decided, and by the way, I think raising the flop is better than calling unless we're calling to call down, as Grant said well, in the once, last Well, once segment. you know the result, you think raising the flop is better than calling now that you know that he followed the river, Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. I think optimally we just call and our plan yeah. is just to call down. Yeah. But if we're going to find a fold on especially relatively non-scary boards, I understand this board is, quote, scary. He could have a six, he could have a seven, he could have clubs, he could have aces, blah, blah, blah. But really, this is a pretty damn good board for queens in this situation where Martini is going to be trying to push us around all diggity day long, right? Well, yeah, absolutely, all diggity day. And you talked about briefly what Martini could have. Let's, let's talk a bit more in depth about that. Okay, great. So what are we scared of as Rivera? Certainly Martini's opening everything. We yes. know that, right? So he does have maybe every seven in the deck. Maybe he doesn't open seven, deuce, seven, three. I, I think he doesn't, but I don't really but know. But who knows? Maybe he does. I wouldn't open seven, deuce, or seven, three off. He probably doesn't, but nonetheless, he has many combos of sevens. Huge amounts of sevens. He doesn't really have any combos of sixes. It's hard to I believe mean, Martini would bet, was it 2.3 million on the turn? Into 3 million with a six? It just seems like really strange as a decision. That's a really nice either bluff catching hand that he could check back with, or uh, I guess, he, yeah, he could check back Mostly with. Mostly it's a check back on this. Right. right, he could bet really small to charge things if he wanted to, and then it's sort of get himself like almost a free river. I mean, there's not much to charge. We don't know I if agree. Rivera even has 8 9 here because pre flop. I agree. He might just fold that if he's just going to queens. I think it's a pretty clear check, yeah. honestly. But um, but I'm saying, like, but but betting 2.3 million feels really surpri surprising and strange. Even if he were to bet 2.3 million on the turn, is he necessarily going to bet huge on the river with the six? I mean, what are you getting called by except better hands is a real concern. Well, that doesn't really matter because he doesn't have a six, right? Right. But that does matter if Martini has a flush, right? So if Martini had a flush, which is worse than a six here, to be clear, yes. would he shove the river? I understand why he would go for a big bet on the turn, get maximum fold equity, etc. Would he really shove with a flush? Because clearly it would be a shove for value. He's not trying to get a seven to fold because that's impossible. Yeah. So. Would he shove a flush for value? I think it's very unlikely. I think if he thought that um, Rivera was actually the type of guy who was just going to hero a huge amount of hands, okay, maybe he would. But I'd be really concerned if I was Martini, be sitting there saying to myself, Julian, Julian, look at this situation. Is this guy really going to call me with two nines now that I made the flush? I'm concerned he won't. Yeah. But I know what he will call me with, all full houses. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think he really has almost any better flushes. Maybe he can have the ace king or ace queen of clubs since he shows up with queens here. Maybe but un very unlikely. So it's, I just would be worried that I'm going to be in one of these situations where my opponent, in this case Rivera, is going to re respond sort of almost perfectly to my shove if I've got a flush. So I think I'm unlikely to do it, especially with the three-bind stack sitting there. Here's the thing that you don't really have to worry about as Martini, though. We think it's possible, and we talked about this on our podcast, that Rivera literally has no full houses in his range. That is true. There might be no sevens that he plays pre-flop in this exact scenario, which is a great reason to triple barrel as Martini, yes. by the way. Martini has, as we said, so many sevens. We like that he triple barrels. We think it's the right idea. The sizing on the river, as we're saying, it doesn't make a ton of sense whether he has a seven or a flush because he's trying to get called by something which is usually an overpair with the situation and the way that Rivera's played it, right? right? So shoving isn't a great story, but maybe Martini believes because of the situation it doesn't really matter, and the shove is more effective because we can really threaten this guy in a way that he's going to panic. And let's be clear, Martini's not trying to fold out queens here. He's trying to fold out two nines. Yeah, something like right? that. Like, and although you could sort of look at it and say, well, it's the same thing. Distribution. It, it distri Distribution is one thing. And really, as you're sitting there at, in, um, in Rivera's seat, Queens feels really different too, right? You're like, well, I beat some hands. Well, I if I, if I'm sitting, if I, I'm underrepped. If I'm sitting there with two nines, I'm kind of relatively straightforwardly repped. Yeah. Not really underrepped. And tens and jacks beat me. I don't think tens and jacks are shoving either, to be fair. But still, queens beat a lot more stuff. Queens block other things also. I don't know, man. Queens feels like 
a really straightforward call over well, here. Well, once we've played it like this, and what we haven't touched on yet, again, is the situation that we're in, yeah. where Martini is going to be doing this as a bluff so frequently. I mentioned all of the combos of sevens he could have. He could have a ton of them, maybe literally all of them. But what does that mean, Grant? Guess what? That means he literally has maybe every combo of cards in the <laughs> deck that is possible. He, we see yeah. that he opened queen five off here. He's probably opening with at least 90% of hands, right? Something like that. He's probably triple barreling on this run out with all of them. Well, maybe not all, but, but certainly if, like, uh, hands that maybe don't not, have not any showdown six. value. Maybe, like, maybe not hands a six. With, hands yeah. with no showdown value, he's probably not going to triple. He's probably going to triple barrel. Anything that has any showdown value, he's An probably checking An ace is no that. good against Rivera's range here. Never. Um, true. That's true. So I think maybe maybe he's not triple barreling all of his hands. Maybe if he blocks stuff that he th thinks Rivera would be folding. I mean, if he has I, two I tens, know. he's not betting the river, right? Yeah, but right. I mean, that wouldn't be a bluff, right? No, so true. I'm talking about bluffs in yeah. general. So. That means there's, anyway, the point is, there's so many combos of bluffs, so many more than the combos of sevens and flushes that there are, that from just a chippy V standpoint, this is clearly a call. Clearly. Now there's ICM, and Rivera's concerned about that 300k money jump. Which is a thing, of course, but there's another kind of money jump also in play here, and it's a $4 million money jump. Yeah, first is $5 million. They've locked up $1 million. There's something called reverse ICM, which is where you should be putting your chips in to gamble a little bit more, although we don't think it's that much of a gamble to put your chips in, no. because the value of those chips and your chance to win the bigger money is so much more than the value of that small money jump. So we think this is a massive reverse ICM scenario for Rivera. He's underrepped. His opponent can have almost everything in the deck. It seems like a call. It seems like a very straightforward call. It's what it really seems like those Rivera didn't have a clear plan here, and he just does, hates that he got shoved on. Doesn't love the board, and is just like, I guess I fold because I don't know what to do. I guess the pressure just ultimately got to Mark Rivera. I mean, look, it's a huge spot. It it's is a monstrous spot. Monstrous spot. At the same point. Don't really like how he played the hand at any stage. Of I the think hand, the flop think. call and the turn call are the correct things to do as long as you follow it up with the river call on a relatively innocuous river card. As played, if we get to the flop that way, I think we're supposed to go call, call, yeah. call, especially on this run out. Right. right. If we ran our ace king, it's maybe we could talk yeah. ourselves into folding once in a while, but surely on this run out, we have to just hold on. Um, that's what we think. But what do you guys think? Because now we're interested in what you have to say. Let us know in the comments. We're definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, do you think Martini was just kind of spewing away and, and Rivera missed a huge opportunity? Do you think Martini's just understanding the situation and this is a great play by him? I'd like to know your thoughts on him as well. We'd also like you to check out another hand where there is a surprising play with Queens, mm. this time by Christoph Vogel saying you got to click best. right up here to check it out. Yeah, they're also at a final table, a lot of money on the line, and he's up against one of the best players in the world as well. Ola Shemian. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. you, you were that. probably going to say Patrick Antonius. I was right? going to say, say Patrick Antonius Patrick for Antonius. most European players. Because they are basically, no, it's, those two guys are the same person. Everyone knows yeah, it. Yeah, of course. So has anyone ever seen them in the same room at the same time? It's a Peter Parker Spider-Man situation, and everyone knows it. Yeah. So another thing to look out for is, of course, our podcast. It's the Breakdown Poker Podcast with the Poker Guys. Yes, it is. It's where we went into a tremendous amount of depth and detail in this hand. Tremendous. So, yeah, so in this case, you got like seven Terrific. or eight minutes of analysis. You shut up. Fantastic. Eight, seven or eight minutes of analysis. On the podcast, you get more like 40 minutes of analysis. We go way, way more in depth examining all the possibilities. We barely touched on the flop play, but we get into should he raise or should he call? If he's going to raise, how much should he raise? Yeah. Based on his thought process, you get to hear us sort of jibber-jabber a little bit, a little arguing. Turn sizing. We it gets a little that tense. A lot. Yeah, we, we discussed the whole deal. So come and check that out. If you like podcasts at all, this is for you. Even if you your... don't like podcasts, it's time to start, you jerks. Get on there. Also, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel.